we will follow along uh, this morning. Uh, we are going through a few changes and there's some getting used to, uh, but we're going to be getting better at that. Uh, I know that we will, and uh, we just want you to get the Word. That's what's most important in this, is the Word. Amen. Uh, Bible evangelism, okay? The evangelism of Jesus Christ teaches us about salvation. Um, you know, sometimes we don't think about our own salvation. Amen. Um, but from time to time, we'll have something happen, or it might be at church, and you begin to wonder, and you think, am I saved? How many of you have ever questioned your salvation? Amen. You, 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 you question your salvation, but Jesus, here we see that he does hold the keys, and he has the answer for your life. So, Let's look at John 8 and 24, and I want to read for you the entire scripture this morning. He says, I told you uh, that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be. You will indeed die in your sins. And they say, who are you, they ask. Just what I have been claiming all along, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable. And what I have heard from him, I tell the world. Uh, they did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be. And that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. Amen? The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Uh, even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. Uh, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching... You are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth, glory to God, will set you free. Uh, they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. No. Amen? Everyone who sins is a slave uh, to that sin. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 35. Uh, praise the Lord. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the, so if the son sets you free, you will be free Indeed. Uh, has Jesus set you free? Has Jesus set you free? Has Jesus, glory to God, set you free? Do you know that you know that you know that you know? Amen. That things are right between you and God. If you were to leave this earth today, if you were to leave this world today, you know that you know that you will be with him forever and ever and ever and ever and evermore. Amen. And we're going to be there together. We're going to see each other. We're going to see those loved ones that have gone on before us. Glory to God. But you have to know of your salvation. You have to know what it means to be saved. Glory to God. And so Jesus teaches us about salvation. Now, in the scripture that I read before us today, he, he presents one of the clearest and most uh, complete sermons on sal salvation that, that you can really find in the Bible. And his heart was always, Jesus' heart, church, was always burdened for the lost, wasn't it? That, that's where his heart was at. His heart was always 
for the lost, lost. And so we can discover what, what Jesus teaches us about salvation. Number one, he taught that there was a need for salvation. He talk, talked about the need for salvation. How many of you know that until a person acknowledges his need, he or she will never be moved to accept the gift of salvation. Amen. Until someone acknowledges that they need Jesus, they're never going to accept Jesus. Are you with me this morning? You've got to realize that you do need him. Uh, for a long time when I was younger, I didn't think I needed anybody. Amen. Until I found out I did. Especially the Lord Jesus Christ. When he came into my life, it changed everything. Amen? Everything. Uh, you see, every person is lost until he or she does something about it. And what is that? It is to believe. We are to believe. We are to believe in Jesus. We are to believe in who he is. And that's what makes our faith what it is today. We believe in Jesus, but more than that, we believe in who he is. The son of the living God. Amen. Uh, you see, uh, he teaches this, us that there are three vital truths. Amen. About the need of salvation. There is a, a need of salvation, church, that is universal. In other words, it spreads throughout the whole world. Uh, and uh, the fact that you need to be saved uh, certainly doesn't mean that you are worse than I am. Amen? It simply means that you're not better than I am. Do you get that this morning? Folks that need to be saved aren't worse than we are. Amen. But, but, but it certainly shows us that they are not, uh, that I'm not better than they are. So we have to understand that. We have to grab a hold of that. Salvation is something needed and should be shared with all mankind. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to share the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. And all you have to do is believe. In uh, John 8 and 24, Jesus says that you will die in your sins uh, if you believe not that I am he. If you believe not that I am the one that I claim to be, uh, you will die in your sins. Do you believe this morning? Do you believe that he is who he says he is? You got to believe, church. Amen. You see, the need of salvation, glory to God, is universal because everyone is lost until he or she reaches out to Christ. Amen. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, uh, if you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. Amen. Can we agree on that? And so let me ask you this question. What must I do to be lost? What have I got to do to be lost? I don't have to do anything, do I? Amen. I don't have to do anything to be lost. You, you are already lost. Amen. You don't have to worry about that. You have already sinned. Uh, just, just remain as you are and you will continue to be lost if you are already lost. You don't have to do anything. Amen. If there was someone who was on one of these cruises, and I've known some folks to fall off some of these cruise ships. I actually had one that, that worked at T.A. Loving Company. He was one of the VP's sons when I first started there. I, I was taking care of his job. I rode around the job site with him the day before they went on that cruise. And then that was on a Friday. They went on the cruise that weekend. That Monday I got the news that he was missing. And he went overboard that ship. But if someone does go overboard a ship... Amen. And they're out in the ocean. Amen. There, there isn't but one thing that they got to do to drown, and that's nothing. 
If they do nothing, they're going to drown, aren't they? But what if that raft comes along to save them? What do they need to do to be saved? They got to reach up, glory to God. And they got to grab a hold of that, that raft. And they got to pull themselves in, praise be to God. That's what Jesus does for you. That's what he did for you because you were lost and undone in that world. You were floating around in an ocean of sin, getting ready to drown at any moment. And he reached down and he picked you up and glory be to God and he saved you and he set your feet on solid ground glory be to God what do you got to do to get lost you ain't got to do nothing to get lost you're already lost but what must you do to be saved believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved glory be to God the Bible says so what does that do for us then what does that do for me I tell you what it does for me. It gives me a confidence. It gives me a confidence and it gives me a faith that my Lord is real, that my Lord is alive, that my Lord did exactly what he uh, said he would do and continues to do exactly what he says he will do. When he says he's coming back, guess what, glory to God? He's coming back. Amen. Uh, so... God's raft of salvation is us putting our trust in Him. Uh, the need of salvation, church, is rooted. And it's rooted in the sin of unbelief. That's the worst sin that someone can have today is unbelief. Do you know that? This is the second truth that is taught by Jesus Christ's statements in this scripture. Because he says, For if ye believe not that I am he, he ye shall die in your sins. Uh, so why is unbelief so serious? Uh, why is it such a serious sin? Because unbelief, church, listen to me, is a rejection of God's only plan of salvation. There's only one plan. There's only one way. There's only one destination that you can get to. One, one way, one avenue by which you can get to God. And that's Jesus Christ. Uh, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall amen die in your sins uh, so it is serious uh, Jesus Christ is the way uh, there are other sins though okay uh, that that do not send a person to hell they're just symptoms of a person's life uh, uh, the virus from which they all spring is the sin of unbelief Amen. It is the rejection of Christ as, as the, the one personal Savior of all mankind. He is the only way. Uh, amen. Peter, uh, think about him for a moment. He was guilty of cursing. The dying thief on the cross next to Jesus was guilty of, of stealing. The Samaritan woman was guilty of adultery. And Zacchaeus was guilty of dishonesty. Amen. Uh, yet none of these sins would send these people to hell. Because they were all what? Forgiven. They were all forgiven by Jesus. All of these things can be forgiven. But when it comes to unbelief. That's a whole different story, church. That's a whole different story. So hold close to your faith. Don't lose sight of God. Don't lose sight of who Jesus is in your life. Because the need of salvation, church, is emphasized, amen, by the penalty of sin. Uh, twice in John 8 and 24, Jesus says, Ye shall die in your sins. Uh, actually, what is he saying here? You will die under the curse of sin. How many of you know that sin is a curse? Amen. Mankind was cursed with sin. And Jesus Christ is the only provision to take care of that sin. He's the remedy for sin. Uh, the curse of unbelief. Uh, you think of someone that is in very bad need of surgery. And you think about what may happen if they don't get that surgery. 
they might die, hadn't they? Amen? You, you think about how badly a diabetic needs insulin. Amen? About what will happen if they don't get that insulin. I've, I've seen people, I've been involved, I've been there when people were having a, a diabetic episode. It's not nice. It's, it, it, it'll scare you. Amen? It will. They, they've got to have that insulin. Amen? How, how, about a, how about the person then that needs salvation? Amen? What will happen? Church, what's going to happen if they don't get that salvation? They're going to die. And they're going to go to hell. And we're going to think, oh, what a shame. What a, what a, what a loss. And then we're going to go on and do what we do, aren't we? We're going to go on our merry way. And we're not going to think much more about it. When the truth is, we could have done something about it. Amen. What about the object of our salvation? Let's look at John 8 and 26. He says in 8 and 26, I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. He is saying what I have to say. I say to the entire world, since the whole world is the object of my salvation. Just those of us that are here this morning weren't the only uh, uh, ones that he was thinking about when he was thinking about saving us. He was thinking about the entire world. He was thinking about the entire universe. He had everybody on his mind. And why? Why is that? Because the Bible says he does exactly what his father wants him to do. And the Bible also says that for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Glory be to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise be unto God. Amen. Doesn't that make you feel good to know that God loves you this morning? Doesn't it make you feel good to know that your faith, your belief, your trust is in the one that can get you to God? Uh, amen. Uh, I'm glad of that. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful for that because all the world needs salvation and therefore God provides it. Amen. Christ teaches about the provision for salvation. How many of you know that Jesus is the one that provides that salvation? He is the reason you're saved. Amen. I think we can all agree on that. Amen. It's because of what he did. Amen. On Calvary's cross. And we believe that. that. That's the foundation for our faith, church. That's the foundation for those of you that are out there and may watch this on, on, on YouTube and on internet. He, he is the reason, uh, praise God, that you have the ability to be saved. But that ability, all right, depends on your belief, your trust in Him. You got to give your heart to the Lord. You got to get things right with God. You got to make it right with the Lord. Uh, so He has that provision. Amen. Uh, some people will say, Preacher, I know I need to be saved. Uh, and I, I, I would never lie about that. And I'm, I'm thankful, uh, preacher, that I'm included in God's object for salvation. But, but tell me, how does God go about providing this salvation? Well, God's provision was the death of his own son. That's how God provided salvation. He allowed his son to die the most miserable of deaths. Amen. Christ taught about the means of receiving salvation. And that's what we, what we really think of, I guess, more than anything, is receiving that salvation. 
Thank, we, we think about the fact that, that yes, thank God I, I received that salvation. But how many of you have given that salvation? Come on now. We're, we're grateful to receive it. We thank God that we're saved. But do we give away what we have been given? It is the gift of receiving salvation. Belief that receives salvation through Christ involves, church, a realization of being lost. We had to realize, didn't we, that we were lost. I realized it years ago. You realized it years ago. Some of you realized it just recently. But praise be to God, you realized it, that you were lost and in need of a Savior. And if you didn't ask God to forgive you of all your sins, if you didn't ask Jesus to come into your life and into your heart and be your Savior, you would still be lost. There are a lot of folks that go to church that are still lost. Going to church doesn't make you saved. Uh, amen. Yeah, believing in God doesn't make you saved. You have got to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he teaches us, amen, from John 8 and 30 to John 8 and 31 about the evidence of salvation. It is our profession of faith. And as such uh, is not uh, uh, evidence of, of somebody else's salvation, but is, it is only the evidence of our salvation. All I can do is speak for myself. Amen? What, what does it say? Let's pull that scripture back up. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. See, all you got to do is have the word. All he's got to do is speak. All we got to do, church, is allow the word of God uh, to move the way the word of God moves. Even as he spake, glory to God, many put their trust in him, put their faith in him, put their belief in him, put their souls in him in his hands. Would you want your soul to be in anybody else's hand? Amen. I wouldn't. I mean, would you want your soul to be in the devil's hand? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want my soul to be in anybody else's hand but in the hand of my Lord and my Savior now, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. And so there is an evidence of our salvation. Amen. Mere profession of faith. It's simply a preliminary outward announcement of your intent. And it can be false, uh, but persistence in Christian living is the real evidence of salvation. And that's why Jesus tells us, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Uh, church, it is time for churches all over. It is time for church folk. It is time for Christians to live exactly according to God's word. We have taken God's word over the years and we have molded it and we have shaped it and we have fitted it for our own lives. Amen? And we have made it uh, what we want it to be. Come on now. Because it helps us to feel better about the life that we're living. And a lot of folks are doing it. But I'm afraid they're going to have to answer one day. How many of you feel blessed that you saved this morning? I feel blessed. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you. That, that I am saved. Amen. And if you were asked to take all the blessings of salvation and compress them into one word, what would that word be? What word would you use? Uh, Jesus used it. And it's a word that I am very familiar with. It's a word that you are very familiar with. Glory to God. It's a word that America is very familiar with. And it is freedom. We are free. And those that he set free, the Bible says, are free indeed. Glory be to God. He makes that way for us to be free. I feel free. I'm going to act 
free. I'm going to be free. And there ain't nobody that can take it from me. There's nobody that can take it from you. They cannot rob your freedom. They cannot take your salvation. You can give it away, but I don't recommend it. Because he set you free. How many of you remember that first feeling of freedom? To have all of that burden removed, all that sin removed from your life. Uh, what did that freedom feel like? What was it like that day that you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and He lifted that heavy burden of sin off of your shoulders? When you asked him to come into your heart and into your life and be your savior. Oh, glory to God. We were free, church, at that very moment. And we continue to be free. Freedom in America is great. Freedom through Christ Jesus is even better. Glory be to God. Uh, and we give him praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name. We can be free from the slavery of sin. Amen. The Bible says that whoever, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. John 8 and 34. But Christ frees from such bondage. Amen. The, uh, the sin that has made you its slave will have its grip broken when you trust Jesus Christ. And church, that's all you got to do. Is trust Jesus Christ. And as we finish today, that's what I want you to have more than anything. I want you to have your faith. I want your faith to be strong. And I want you to have your trust in Jesus Christ. Every day of your life, trust Him. And He won't let you down. He won't let you down. He's got a plan for you. He's got a purpose for you. Christ taught all you will ever need to know about salvation. He has made clear to you today about the need of salvation. If you're not saved, simply put, you need to be saved. If things aren't right between you and God, then He can get it right. Amen today. Amen. Right now, as you take a leap of faith, amen. The evidence will be forthcoming and, and all the blessings of salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. Will you stand to your feet this morning? Glory be to God. And I'm going to ask you a very simple question, but a very profound question. If for some reason you were to get in an accident today and, and heaven forbid you were to die in that accident, would you know that your soul is right with God and that you would be in heaven with him forever and ever and ever and ever to see your family, to see those loved ones that have gone home before you, to see the Lord Jesus Christ in all of his splendor and glory and to see God on his throne don't you want to know him don't you want to know him don't you want to know him today uh, today is the day of salvation so if you're not sure if you're not sure if things are right between you and God don't walk out of here today without getting it right with God please don't walk out of here today without allowing me to just have a simple time with you, a simple prayer that God can bless you from. In Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, would there be one, would there be two, would there be three, would there be any this morning that would say, Pastor Mark, I don't know. I don't know if things are right between me and God, but I want to know. I walked in this church a, a sinner. I want to walk out a saved sinner. Would there be one? Would there be two? Would there be three? That would just step out this morning and allow me to pray with you. In Jesus' name. Allow me to pray that sinner's prayer with you. But all you have to do, all you have to say is, God, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. 
I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. I believe he died on Calvary's cross for me. And I believe on the third day that he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and now sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty.